Hey guys, how's it going? Stray here. Today I want to talk about Tyrael. Tyrael is a melee warrior slash bruiser that can fit into many different types of comps and counters many different heroes. He's usually only seen at higher levels of play, and this is because his kit kind of empowers your team rather than doing something by himself. So Mirden, for example, has a lot of threat just for backline, but Tyrael really needs his allies to be able to follow up and provide damage. So let's go over Tyrael's kit very briefly. So his Q is Eldrin's Might, and you throw it in a direction, and after a few seconds, you can return to it. Um, the initial Q does damage, as it does slow them for 25% for 2.5 seconds. However, once you reactivate it, it also re-slows anyone in the area around the sword. Now this sword has unlimited range, uh, so as long as you teleport back, you can go as far as you want away from the sword, and you'll still be able to use the ability. His W is Righteousness, and it is a shield that basically shields you and allies near you. Now, the shield doesn't really do much for allies, but it's mostly for you. So, obviously you can shield minions with it, you can shield heroes with it, you can shield summons with it, but it's really a very small portion of the ability. The main, the main portion is the amount that it shields you for. So if you're using this, you're generally not using it for the shield on yourself, or on your allies, so you're using it for the shield on yourself. In addition to that, it actually costs quite a bit of mana. At 60 mana, compared to 50 and 45 for the rest of his abilities, it's his most expensive ability. You might That might be counterintuitive for, say, if you're playing a Nubrak, where a Nubrak's shield is very cheap. Righteousness is actually a very expensive ability mana-wise. So if you're using all of Tyrael's abilities, especially Righteousness, you're going to be running out of mana very quickly on Tyrael. So make sure that you're only using your abilities as you need them. Tyrael's E is Smite, and it does damage in a targeted area. And if you walk over it, or if any of your allies walk over it, it grants you and your allies movement speed for 2 seconds and it's 25%. So this also affects minions. So if I turn on minions here, and say I want to push really quickly down a lane, I can give my my minions movement speed and they'll move a little bit quicker. Now obviously that's not the biggest thing, but it's still helpful. Tyrael's passive is Archangel's Wrath, and once you die, you can explode to Your deal quite a bit of damage. And you can move around while this happens. So that takes about um, almost three quarters of the wall out. Um, of course it's level 20, so it does 1200 damage and that's a huge chunk of damage. So if you, I mean, if you're playing Tyrael, and if anyone dies in the fight, it should be you because of the damage that you can put out after you die. Now, of course, that you might not always hit your enemies with Archangel's Wrath, but it's it, even if you don't hit them, you're basically zoning the enemy team um, from fighting against your team because you can just leave the spirit near your allies, and the enemy team is going to be zoned by it. So let's talk about heroes that Tyrael is good with. But before we do that, let's talk about uh, Tyrael's level 10s, because it's important to understand uh, why you should pick Tyrael, and a big portion of that is Sanctification level 10. So after 0.5 seconds, you create a holy field of energy around you that makes all allied heroes invulnerable for 3 seconds. So this is basically like giving your entire team a Divine Shield from Uther, except it doesn't speed them up, but of course you have Smite to give them movement speed. And it has a bit of a cast time, so if we look at we look at the ability here really quickly. Yes, this will help. It's a short cast time, and then this whole area here, even if you step in and out, grants invulnerability. So this does a few things, and it pairs really well with some heroes, and it counters some heroes really effectively. So obviously, because it gives all of your allies, including yourself, invulnerability, it is a game-changing ability. So casting this takes a lot of experience, and it also takes the experience of your allies to, to trust you that you're going to use sanctification in a fight. So as I said earlier, if your allies don't follow up with you, and they don't commit to you, and they don't they don't trust that you're going to use sanctification at the right time, then Tyrael's effectiveness is significantly reduced, because using sanctification effectively and at the right time is a huge part of picking Tyrael in the first place. Choose a talent. So some heroes that Tyrael is good with include Thrall, Tracer, Kerrigan, Medic, Illidan, Greyman, Butcher, and of course having a good team. So most of these heroes are very dive heavy and aggressive heroes. Uh, obviously Kerrigan, for example, and Illidan and Greyman, they would just fight in the sanctification. However, heroes 
uh, like Medic, you can use to just sink Medic if the enemy team engages really hard. And you can keep it to keep just you can just use it to keep your backline your backline alive. You don't necessarily need to use it to go aggressive and keep your frontline alive. A good combo to use it with is with Thrall's Earthquake as well. So Thrall will go in an Earthquake and slow their whole team. And then while, when they want to turn on Thrall and kill him, you can sink. Uh, you, Thrall, and whatever other allies you have nearby, and just turn on the enemy. So, Sanct Sanctification and Earthquake is a really strong combo. And there's also quite a few other ones. The reason that Tyrael is good with Tracer is because he's one of the most mobile tanks in the game, if not one of the most mobile heroes in the game. Eldrin's might obviously allows you to queue over walls and queue over terrain, and he has speed, and he has shields, and of course he has Sanctification. So, not only is he extremely mobile and able to keep up with Tracer, but he's a pretty good threat to the enemy backline. And if they turn on Tracer, you can always sink while still playing aggressive. Kerrigan is good against... Uh, sorry. <laughs> Tyrell is good against heroes such as Kerrigan. Uh, dive heroes in general, but Tracer, Zeratul. Uh, he's also good versus backline heroes such as Medic um, or Vala, because you can essentially just... No matter where they are in the game, you can always engage on them with Aldrin's Might. You can just Q on their backline, engage, you can speed yourself up, you can speed your team up, and once you get other talents, you can also slow the enemy team down. Uh, the reason Ker he's good against heroes like Kerrigan is obviously, or dive heroes in general, is because of sanctification, and you can sank your allies and keep you and everyone alive. And the reason he's good against Tracer is because of level 13 when he gets Imposing Will, which slows Tracer and pretty, make, pretty much makes it almost impossible for Tracer to do anything. Um, and the reason he's good against Medic is, like I said, because you can just get on Medic at all times. So Tyrell in general is bad versus hard CC, and generally Tychus as well. Obviously every tank is bad versus Tychus though, because Tychus deals percentage damage, and just high damage in general. So you can run Tyrell as a solo tank, but you generally want to run him with, if you're going to run him as a soul tank, you're going to want at least another support. So like a Tassadar or a Medivh or something that can help reduce the damage that Tyrell takes. Tyrell's also not an early game hero. He gets his most game defining talents at levels 10, 13, 16. 10 is really when he starts to pick up steam. But before that, he's fairly underwhelming. So something to keep in mind too, Sanctification has a 0.5 second channel time. And most abilities in the game, when they're interrupted, they go on a 10 second cooldown. So for example, if you're trying to cast Twilight Dream on Malfurion and you get interrupted while casting, it goes on a 10 second cooldown. Sanctification, when interrupted, does not go on any sort of cooldown. So that means you can spam the ability without worrying that it'll go on cooldown. Now it still gets interrupted and you can be say silenced through it and not be able to cast it, but it won't go on that 10 second cooldown if you're interrupted by say a Tychus Grenade when you're trying to cast it. That's very important um, to just playing Tyrael in general, so you don't have to worry about it being interrupted as much. Obviously, you're still going to worry about hard CC and not being able to cast it for a lengthy amount of time. So let's move on to Tyrael's talents. Level 1, you're going to want Purge Evil, and this simply increases the damage that Smite deals to heroes. So Smite's a pretty low cooldown at 6 seconds, and it does significantly more, moderately more damage than Eldrin's Might. So having 30% more damage on your highest damaging ability with the lowest cooldown, uh, is going to give you significantly more damage overall. Uh, the other options here are Protection and Death, which grants, which has your Archangel's Wrath explode and give 50% of max health for 10 seconds. Uh, but So this is actually quite good, but it's very, very niche. So in the right situation where you're always dying first in fights, and you can always explode before your allies die, and you can grant them a shield and they can carry on fighting, this is an amazing godlike talent but that situation is very niche you might not be dying or you can avoid dying in a fight and if necessary most of the time you're going to want to avoid dying in the first place sometimes it's good to die in Tyrael uh, because you can pick up quite a few kills for it or if the enemy team just throws everything into you and then you explode after and you kill just one person uh, your team can trade or get a better trade off of that and sometimes in that situation protection and death might be good i actually really like it with chogo comps if you have a Tyrael with it because uh, if they're trying to kill you and then you explode for tier, on, on to Chogol, he's basically impossible to kill. Even in death, it increases the damage of Archangel's Wrath by 25%, and afterwards you can use the abilities, um, but they don't do any damage. Um, so you can, you, this means that you can Q, you can Eldrin's Might directly onto heroes to guarantee the damage. You can also speed yourself up to move faster, and you can shield your allies. 
You can also uh, move. And, you can also slow them, and you can also slow enemies and speed up your allies. So all this, although the utility is nice, some games you might not even die on Tyrael, uh, or you're, you'll die one time. And you're just not getting any value out of either of the talents that, that I just mentioned. The Purge Evil is going to give you value every game. Regeneration Master isn't as good as it used to be. And only getting one regen per second, um, at, capping at 30, one per globe, is just not worth the trade-off. If you stack, if you stack regenera Regeneration Master fully, it's better than Purge Evil most of the time. But that requires you being able to actually stack it fairly early in the game to get use of it. So if you're only stacking it by 13 or 15 minutes, then you're only getting full effectiveness out of it for maybe five minutes or so. Whereas you're getting full effectiveness out of Purge Evil from level one. At level four, you have two options, Horagic Reforging and Swift Retribution. So Swift Re Retribution is just really, really strong. I mean, Horagic Reforging is two, but so if you look at the movement speed here, it's 25% increased to 35%, and the durations increase from two to three. So just the duration is nice, but the increased movement speed is also very, very powerful. So just for reference, mount speed is only 30%. So you're getting faster than mount speed instantly, six, six second cooldown, three second uptime. So you only have a 50% or you have a 50% total uptime in general on Swift Retribution. And if you have allies that are either want to dive very heavily on the enemy team or are immobile, then Swift Retribution is very, very strong. Uh, so generally, you want to get this talent if your team is immobile or if you just can't decide on what to get, because this is a, a safe option. Project Reforging uh, reduces the cooldown of Eldrin's Might by 5 seconds. Effectively, it only when you hit a hero or hit an enemy, sorry, but you're going to be almost always hitting an enemy, so this isn't a worry about putting it on a lower cooldown. So if you do take Horagic Reforging, uh, you can see that the cooldown is significantly re reduced and it's basically instantly up uh, when you reactivate the ability when it goes onto full cooldown. You can see that it's like it's two seconds effectively when you hold it until uh, you can reactivate your sword. So the cooldown is very significant. However, one thing that I mentioned earlier as well is that the mana cost on all of Tyrael's abilities is fairly high. So if you're using Eldrin's Might consistently, you're going to be running out. You're going to be running into mana issues. Uh, so while in fights this might be slightly more effective than Swift Retribution, you're also using quite a bit more mana. Amplified Healing and Vigorous Strike basically both give you some kind of healing, um, but I, I find that Swift Retribution is just better in most situations. Uh, these are more sustained fighting, and Swift Retribution and Horagic Reforging are more uh, just go kind of fights. And these are obviously talents that are better at higher tiers of play. Perfect. At level 7, we have a few options, but Reciprocate is pretty much the one you're going to take most of the time. So when, you're, when your shield expires, it's only the shield on you. When that expires, you'll do you deal damage in, in AoE, and this helps with wave cleared and helps with pushing for damage on backline, and it basically just gives Tyrael a bit more kill potential. Especially since you're going to be diving pretty much every fight, this helps you get kills. This is better than follow through because it does more damage, and because it also does AoE damage, so again, helps with wave clear. Del Tree doesn't really do anything. The duration isn't going to be really benefited at all because the shield on Righteousness isn't that high in the first place, so it'll probably be destroyed before you get the extra two seconds out of it. And the, the reduced cool sec, cooldown by two seconds isn't that significant. Angel's Grace increases the movement speed of Eldrin's Might by 40%, but you already have the movement speed from Smite, so this is pretty much going to waste. So Reciprocate is pretty much the only option here. At level 10, uh, judgment is just bad, and sanctification is just amazing, and pretty much why you pick Tyrael in the first place. Judgment, perhaps you could be using it in some kind of pick comp, or if your team really has no dive whatsoever, you could use it to help your team engage. Uh, but you really need to make sure that you have follow up for judgment, and the range is quite low. Um, so this kind of looks large, but for a heroic ability, it's it's quite low. So if you compare it to Hunt on Illidan. Hunt is basically better in every way. It has a longer range, it has a much shorter cooldown, it doesn't cost mana. Uh, I think it stuns about the same, but it also does significantly more damage. You can also cast it on any hero, or on any enemy, instead of just a hero. 
At level 13, you're going to want to take Imposing Will. Imposing Will is a huge power spike for Tyrael, so it slows the attack speed and movement speed of any enemy that damages you. So even if it's just a Sylvanas that throws out her Shadow Dagger and it happens to hit you, this is going to slow her attack speed and movement speed by 50%. So this is very, very effective. It, it all points in the game, so if you're just poking for damage and they accidentally hit you, you're going to slow them. makes it really easy for your team to engage. In fights, if they're if they're attacking your team in general, they're going to hit you, and their movement speed and attack speed is going to be slowed. Um, or if you're just trying to get away, it's going to make them very, very difficult for them to chase you. This is really good versus heroes that have uh, kind of da more damage over time instead of burst damage, because the shield will last longer and therefore affect enemy heroes more. You have Burning Rage here, Angelic Absorption, and Angelic Might, but uh, Burning Rage and Angelic Might basically do damage, and Imposing Will just it's far more effective utility-wise, and Angelic Absorption gives you health regen. Uh, but you can you can prevent more damage with the attack speed and movement speed slow from Imposing Will than the actual heal from Angelic Absorption. Note that the shield is also going to die pretty much far too fast for you to actually gain more than like one or two procs out of this, so you're not going to actually gain that much. <clears throat> At level 16, again, Holy Ground, the only option here, uh, in my opinion anyway. I pretty much don't think I've ever seen any kind of high tier tier player ever not get Holy Ground. It's pretty much his key defining ability, and it grants a huge power spike for your team once you hit 16. So what it does is, once you reactivate Eldrin's Might, you block it, and enemies cannot pass through here. So this is much better than tier, than Tassadar's Force Wall, which prevents all all enemy all heroes from passing through. So allied heroes can pass through Holy Ground, uh, but enemy heroes cannot. So this, this this has a lot of different uses, and one of the uses here is that it's just wide enough so that if you Q here, enemies cannot walk through the gates. So if enemies are trying to walk through the gate. When you're pushing or something, you can just throw Q here, and then when they walk past, you can re-Q, and they'll be blocked out, and that makes for an easy kill. And it lasts for fairly long as well. Uh, obviously, you can hit through chokes here. You can hit in all kinds of situations. It can also steal points with it, which is very, very effective. It basically makes it so the enemy team can never do any kind of boss with tier around because you can steal it far too easily. So you only have to hit the center off for... To, to move the target in the direction. So if I just cast it a tiny bit up here, the target will be hit down. If you actually go into Talents and you take Paragic Reforging here, I agree. and you hold Eldrin's Might before reactivating it all the way until the end, you can actually get more than one down at a time. Which doesn't really have that many uses, but it is kind of cool. So the other options at 16 are Blood for Blood, Salvation, and Blade of Justice. And Salvation might look cool, but this is only Tyrell Shield, so it doesn't affect um, any shields that you give to allies, so only the shield you cast on yourself will be stronger. This goes for Imposing Will and Angelic Absorption as well. They don't, they only grant, this only slows enemies that attack you, not heroes that you shield. You can get Movement Speed here in Blood for Blood or attack speed, sorry, but again, the Holy Ground utility is just far, far too strong. At level 20, you're just going to get Hardened Shield. I think that Holy Arena could be good in very coordinated play, if your allies are actually all stacking in Sanctification. And Sanctification just got nerfed recently, so the, the cooldown got increased by 20 seconds. Uh, so I think Holy Arena is getting a little bit less effective, because you have Sanctification up a little bit less. So Hardened Shield, in general, is just going to let you tank a little bit more damage, let you be a little bit uh, more aggressive, and make you a bit harder to kill. So in general, Tyrael is a very is one of the highest skill cap tanks in the game, if not the highest skill cap tank. And this is because all of his abilities can be used in many different ways. You can smite to do damage, you can smite to speed up your team, you can Eldrin's might to get over walls, help allies, slow enemies, you can use it as a holy for the holy ground to block enemies, to seal boss. You can use it to split teams. Then you have then you have sanctification, which can be used to basically completely turn around a fight. You can block out several alts. You can block out a Twilight Dream, um, a Maw from Zagara, uh, 
you can use it to counter Zeratul VP. So if you get your, your team gets VP'd by Zeratul, you can just spam Sanctification when you come out of VP, and basically the enemy team can't follow up on the VP at all. You can use it on a Leo Entomb. So Leo Entombs, you can Eldrin's Might into the Entomb, and then Sanctification to save your allies. Uh, so this has quite a bit of uses, and to learn how to use all the intricacies of Tyrael, you're going to have to play them a lot. Uh, Archangel's Wrath, Archangel's Wrath, I should say, uh, will also kill enemies, um, obviously, but knowing when to die is also a skill you're using on Tyrael. So if you want to learn Tyrael, I suggest that you play him with a friend who's playing uh, a Grey Mane or a Butcher or an Illidan or something aggressive, and you just learn when to sink, when to speed your ally up, when to go in, and just when to synergize with the melee carry on your team. So I hope this video wasn't too rambly, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and until next time, thanks for watching.